Hello and welcome to a very special Game & Browse production. Today we're going to do a commentary on our episode on Evil Dead Hail to the King. Normally we wouldn't do something like this, but since this episode was such a big and special achievement for us to do, it cost more than it should, it's also been like a year in the making, we really felt that it was very fitting to do something on this. And also it is October 15th. It is the 40th anniversary of the movie today. Yeah, so like Aaron said, we started actually writing this project back in December of 2020, and with it debuting this month, October 2021, this was truly about a year's worth of Game & Browse, just brain power and budget and writing and rewriting and playing and shooting. So uh, it was a big deal, and to date, it's definitely our biggest, uh, most ambitious project. <laughs> and we won't ever top it. No, I don't think so. I don't think the, the budget would, well, we don't have to talk about the budget. but. Uh, regardless, we're really, really excited to not just share this video with you, but also share a little uh, behind the scenes commentary with you. So without further ado, here is the Game & Browse production of Evil Dead, Hail to the King. Let's get started. Enjoy. All right, there's us. Yep. And this wonderful title card that I ended up buying, which is another part of the budget. <laughs> In case you were uh, forgetting what you were watching. So I'm pretty sure it was you who came up with the idea that we get lost on the way to Mount GameCon. Because I'll be honest, I actually I wrote the script to be a lot more complex than it was. Helen looked at it and was like, one second, was like, no. Yeah, no, <laughs> so we walked to Mo it GameCon back. is something realistic. It's something that we do every year, and it's just good plot fodder. Especially because oh, yeah. at the end, we finally end up at Mo GameCon. Spoiler. But um, it just makes sense to get lost on the way there. Um, now, fun fact about this is we shot this um, actually in our garage. Yeah, there was a green screen This is all us. green screened. And, well, this part's actually real, obviously. Right, but but all, the, whole... all the driving was we mm -hmm. GoPro'd it through a window. And we made the mistake of doing it in July in our garage. So it was very hot. Yeah, I, th that's why Helen is wearing a Phoenix Red hoodie, hoodie in the middle of the summer. <laughs> because green on green doesn't work. She was wearing right. a green Michigan State shirt. So, of course, I had to wear a red hoodie. Now, this guy here, this crotchety old shopkeep, is my dear old dad. Uh, my dad is a huge fan of the Evil Dead, Army of Darkness uh, franchise, and that's, of course, where I got my love from uh, from him. And so he was our crotchety old man. Now, these were shot out of order. Helen was shot on a green screen in our garage. Now, uh, my father-in-law was shot in my dad's garage. We, <laughs> yeah. we formatted it to look like a shop. Right, like a quick stop. For brief cameo from her dog, Freya. Yeah, so that's Freya, the goodest girl. Uh, actually, if you go listen to that line about it got my wife, it got my dog, uh, it's funny because he values the dog over his wife. Well, the funniest thing about that whole line is that my mom wrote that line. So the line about the dog being loved more was written by my mom. So that's funny. Also, that shot that Helen just ran from was... Uh, a post office, not actually a gas station. Right. We just picked a post office that was closed on Sunday in a back rural town. Right. And as we're pulling out here, our friend is behind us being left with the boom and we're yeah. filming in the distance. So he's like, you guys better not leave me here. And it was on a Sunday afternoon, so we probably looked really suspicious. So these shots obviously look a bit different. That's because they're drone shots. We yeah. don't we don't have any drones, and we've never had the opportunity to use a drone. Um, but, but we, we recently we, yeah. befriended a drone pilot, Ryan. Yeah, so Thank he, you he went for up. Footage. He went up and flo flew about 200 feet in the air, and it was super cool to actually use those. And the funny thing, oh, spooky foreshadowing here. Yeah, the end. funny thing about this drone footage is it looks like it's far away, it's exotic, but uh, these roads are oh, actually I mean, all, about all of these roads two were, miles yeah, away from not, us. Not very far. <laughs> I mean. Oh yeah, so that was now, really Now this cool. was actually pretty far. This is about an hour away. Right, so this is my friend uh, Wendy and Dan, their property. They own the Roundhouse, where, uh, which is of course the setting of the bulk of the video here. But um, yeah, of course- Awesome rural stuff out here. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, quite a few barns and just, it's um, Blair Witch Project-esque right. kind of woods. <laughs> and of course, in typical horror movie fashion, no there's signal. no cell service. And actually there was very little cell signal service out here, so. Yeah, so it really wasn't too far from the truth, to be honest. So, and of course, this is August when we're filming. It's really, really uh -huh. hot. A handheld shot from my friend Brian here pitching in as our, uh, one of our lone cameramen. Cause yeah, shout out to Brian. No, no budget. Right. Here's the spooky garage. Join us. Yeah, nice little deadite hum there. Oh, yeah, that, that's a throwback to the original movie, and obviously. Speaking of foreshadowing, there's the barn in the background. Yeah, that's the barn we end up at. We pretend it's a further away barn, but it's actually yeah, that barn. It's okay. Movie magic, right? Yeah. 
Now in this garage, we thankfully we try to keep it dark, but somewhere in the corner is like a pink Barbie car, so. Yeah, <laughs> not very spooky. But um, this is the basement of the roundhouse. And Which we tried to, you know, make it all nostalgic and retro. Uh, but the thing is, is a lot of those props aren't very old. Now, we do have the Blockbuster box with the Gex. That's genuine. That's, that's a throwback to my childhood. House. And there's my old Alienware laptop. Oh, that Alienware. It got is, me through college and all that and stuff. Did. So you broke. You, know, you literally I, broke the case. I think you sat on it yeah, or rolled over it or I, something. I wanted to give it one last hurrah. Before it was yeeted yeah, in the trash can. Like everything at this project. A lot of this stuff was yeeted in the trash can because it was just trashed. Oh, yeah. But, um... Uh, well, especially, like, you got some trash that we have on the floor. Oh, um, yeah, it was all thrown away. The pizza box, the cans, the Dunkaroos. Yeah, like, originally that was supposed to be a Surge can, but it ended up being 7-Up because we couldn't went, find Surge. Before this, so we did a lot of prep for this weekend, of course, but I went to three different stores trying to find Surge, and apparently it was out of rotation, so we had to go with the throwback 7-Up. Shout out to Bionicle there. Ooh. <laughs> the that old, did not get yeeted in the trash. No, that was That's an old game board game closet. that I love. So. Oh, here comes the here ominous appearance of our game. Oh, yeah. I wanted the Dreamcast version, but we ended up with the PS1 version. But that's fine. And there's our uh, cassette deck that will also end up getting thrown and then thrown away. Yeah. Um, the Goodwill find, of course. Yeah. And I think this like $4. was a, a good opportunity for a brief cameo. We have the voice of John Riggs appearing here. How you feeling? Yeah. Um, you know, obviously he's based out of Seattle, so there's no way he'd appear in this. But we're like, hey, John, you you want to do a qu uh, uh, quick uh, cameo for us doing our Professor Noby, so to speak? Right. Professor Riggs. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we didn't have a real uh, reel to reel tape deck, so we used the cassette, and that's it's fine. There's some smell the fart acting there. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> So later on, we wanted to actually have this uh, cassette deck catch on fire, yeah. but we were afraid to light we're fire not in the set basement. A fire in my friend's so basement. then we tried to use dry ice. The dry ice didn't work. Actually, the dry ice froze the cassette deck. Right, because we ended up the pouring table. water in the tape deck, and it actually ended up freezing the dry yeah, ice. Yeah, because we wanted to get it to sublimate out. And, and so the go. tape deck actually got stuck to the table, so we had to clean that up. And so then oh. we just I just had a, a fog machine burp some air at it. And, <laughs> right. And, <laughs> so and then of course and we this CGI'd is all, some yeah, flames. CGI CGI here. the sparks and the flames, so not what I wanted, but it, it works. It's fine. Yeah. You can actually see the water on the table from right. whenever we had the So duty. again, it gets thrown and then thrown, thrown away. The garbage. Right. <laughs> That's just the theme of this whole video. Right. Yeah. Um, I loved how nonchalant you were there. Just, all right. Yeah. Blind playthrough. Either way, let's just go ahead and get started. So we got some Dunkaroos. Go ahead and push them off here. And now an actual commercial for the game. Um, so a lot of the stuff that you actually see on the TV, um, I had to pre-edit it before we went down for the weekend to film it, and I just hooked my laptop up to it, and then I basically mirrored everything on the laptop over to the TV. Because I had this kind of weird meta theory that I was like, I didn't want you to ever feel like you left the real world where we were reviewing the game. Because normally I'd crop off the boards, oh, Monster Vision here. I have to have that. Yeah, of course you can't have, uh, Evil Dead without Monster Vision. Um, but you want a gimbal. Yeah, it was Spoiler. me with a gimbal. Um, the immersion. And, and so I wanted the immersion of everything by having it display in the real world. Because normally I'd crop off the edges, throw it on a background and a drop shadow. But I, I really wanted that CRT off that to glow and all that and so forth. So right. it was super cool. Um, but a total pain in the butt to do. Um, I actually did that recently for our like two hour mixtape of a bunch of retro things. Oh, the uh, the Commodore Evil Dead. I want to play that at some point, but we don't have a Commodore, so. No. Oh well. I didn't even know that existed before we did the deep dive research for this. Yeah, we also don't have the PS2 games. Uh, or the Xbox ones yeah. yet, but I'd really like to get those. And now, honestly, I'm kind of on the lookout for them because I feel like we have to have them now. And like I said, I wanted the Dreamcast version more, but, you know, this PS1 version was completely fine by me. And, you know, I've made, as you see, multiple um, comparisons to Resident Evil, but naturally those comparisons actually fit very well because, you know, the early Resident Evil games are PS1 titles. Right. So And they it, uh, control the same way. Yeah. Yeah, so here's where we kind of get into the bulk of the review, because we are, you know, at our roots, a gaming channel, so of course it's a deep dive. And this is, of course, where I talk about meeting Bruce Candle, Candle, <laughs> Bruce, Bruce Candle. Candle, Bruce Campbell, who was just an absolute pleasure. And of course, we had to write in my Bruce Campbell merch somehow. So Monster Vision drops it off, which thanks Monster Vision, that was very better convenient. than FedEx. Better than FedEx, yeah. Guess what? It didn't arrive damaged, but yeah. you know. <laughs> 
So yeah, we met him at Left Bank Books in St. Louis, and uh, I screwed up because I called him Mr. Campbell, and I regret that because I've read all of Bruce Campbell's books, and he says specifically, don't call me Mr. Campbell because why, Aaron? Because Mr. Campbell makes soup. So I get up to him and I'm like, Mr. Campbell, I'm such a big fan. And I'm like, dirt, dirt, da dirt. <laughs> I called him Mr. Campbell, but he just smiled and he enjoyed talking to us. And I remember he specifically called my family classy. He said we were a classy, nice family. So uh, it was yeah. just great meeting him and but getting merch signed. That was a cool time shot we had to do because both Helen and I were off to the flanks and we were putting uh, the book and the um, action figure and, and the signed action action figure up in front of the TV yeah. as well because everything kind of had to be slightly choreographed whenever we were doing this oh, because yeah. it was all based because I put the I put the camera on a tripod and then I just filmed the TV for about 15 minutes here. I remember I came down the stairs and you're like no I'm filming <laughs> and I was like oh sorry I didn't realize what you were yeah. doing because I forgot that you were actually filming the TV itself but I yeah. really like that because all the lighting and everything had to be consistent so it's very important to not ever change that dynamic right. Um, you really went full Spielberg with some of the things, talking oh, yeah. about the immersion and the environment. I loved it. Yeah, uh, no. If Spielberg was <laughs> had the film development of a, of a trash can, sure. You're like Spoilborg. You're like <laughs> some terrible offbeat version or off-brand. Yeah. Um, it, you know, and it's actually very interesting to think about because I would consider personally Evil Dead to be a master class in the topic of low-budget cinematography. Oh, it's like the uh, ultimate B movie. Like, Sam Raimi is not a director. Sam Raimi is a magician. Yeah, he is. Everything that he did, you know, with the the custom style, um, uh, like. What would you call it? You know, like the, the the standard gear that would be in a camera, uh, in a cinematographer's toolbox, like dollies and cranes and all that and stuff. You know, that's instead of a, a, a dolly, you get, you know, Vasicam where you're sliding it around. On Vaseline, yeah, right. You know, or um, uh, <laughs> putting it on uh, motorcycle handbars and stuff like that. Right. You know, all the various things that they had to do on a very, very low practical Oh, it's budget. incredible. And then think about all the stuff they used for the gore. Play-Doh, milk, chicken, all this yeah. crazy stuff. Of course, stuff. Uh, corn syrup and all that. Oh, yeah. yeah. The dinner plate, uh, what do they call them? The dinner plate oh, contacts, the contacts for the yeah. dead eye. I mean, like, one of the they things... They pulled out all the stops. Well, so when, in preparation for this, we watched um, Bruce Campbell do a commentary on Evil Dead mm -hmm. as a... Uh, it, it, was it was a, a live stream. It was a live stream, kind of like, you know, Twitch. Uh, people could watch and comment in real time with him, and he would answer some of those questions. Yeah. And... It was super cool because, of course, obviously it stemmed into some of the behind the scenes things. And so, like, one of the things that stuck with me was whenever uh, someone gets, what was it, a pencil gets stabbed in the, yes, in, like, the, the pencil in the ankle. In the ankle. Um, they used, like, a chicken thigh or something or, like, a chicken, a chicken breast. So it was just nasty old meat and they right. stabbed it. <laughs> I bet the set of the original Evil Dead smelled. smelled so I think they nasty. talked about it that, yeah. Like, I think was, they did. Yeah. We, I mean, in their defense, we smelled pretty terrible after this. Well, movie. ours wasn't because of raw meat or anything. Ours was just because we sweated in a barn like we were doing right. Richard Simmons for four hours. Uh, three like, words: August in Missouri. Like, yeah, it's I mean, so nasty. It, it's already the swamp. Swamp East Missouri. And then aside from that, uh, we spent the latter half of it outside. We were basically outside in that barn, which you'll see later in the film, yeah. um, from about what eight p.m. to. 2 a.m. Oh, like, it, was exhausting. It, it was It was quite a romp. Both nights. Because yeah. we, we devoted the, the bulk of the filming to one weekend in August. So we left on a Friday and we got back on a Sunday. And we only had really one shot to do this. So right. it was do or die on just about everything. Yes. And both nights, Friday and Saturday, we were out in the wilderness filming till like 2 a.m. It was absolutely exhausting. Like, I had some PTSD after this weekend <laughs> because it was so much work yeah. and so much micromanaging and preparation. And we had a lot of setbacks too and we'll well, I guess we can recount those now I mean the first thing your dad said to you was don't lose the truck keys because we had to borrow his dad's truck and of oh. course we lose the truck keys and within like the first, the first hour, hour right we lost we, the truck we keys. were doing a scope out of the location we were walking to one of the barns and it, it fell out in a patch of grass so I never, we never heard, heard it. it I never heard it hit right. the ground so we lost the truck keys um coming down to my friend's barn property I got lost yeah so Funny, I drove yeah, in like one car. literally got lost the GPS failed her right yeah because I, my cell service went out shocking so we got lost no not that turn the other we turn the other the turn the other keys. turn 
Um, we had some other setbacks because we had to, of course, work around the schedule for the people who that lived live at the there. house because they had yeah. to be at work like normal human beings the next morning. But we're the crazies that were out filming at 2 a.m. on a summer night. So we had to work around their schedules. Yeah. So we had to go quiet right around midnight because we couldn't be disruptive. So there was a huge amount of setbacks. And then, like, we had to go get a friend halfway through the weekend that yeah, couldn't so, come down you know, like on I Friday. Like I said, this was already an hour away. So we had to go up there. So it took about three hours round trip to get them oh, involved. All the dry ice. The, the dry ice that we brought down on Friday, it all sublimated. So when we needed we it on more Saturday, it was gone. So we had to go buy more dry ice. Well, and then, like I said, the dry ice effect didn't even work in the end. Right. It was so just a waste of time. We made two trips for dry ice and it never really worked. So <laughs> good investment there, guys. <laughs> Thankfully for a lot of the lows that we had in the trip, there was some really good highs that kind of brought us back into the mood yes, of things. Yes, and we're coming up on the very we're coming first up on the turning first one, point. Because right now in this very scene that we are doing, uh, the mood is about a negative 10. Oh, everybody's angry, everybody's unhappy. We're frustrated, you know, we've enough, lost enough, a lot of time. Yeah, we're set back on time and we're running out of time this weekend and everything's just going wrong. Yeah. And uh, the first scene where things come back to life is whenever my friend punches through the door. Right. Well, oh, in addition to losing the truck keys, the generator key was on there as well, yeah. wasn't it? Oh gosh, it was a mess. But yeah, so this this moment where he lands the door punch, we were all sitting off, off camera and we were like, silent cheering when he lands this because that is where things started to turn around because we only had yeah. one door. We'll uh, we'll talk about that more in a couple seconds here. Yeah, we're jumping ahead. Yeah, but that medieval times, we actually took that photo. That was fun. Uh, whenever we were in Schaumburg, Illinois, we were doing that for the Friends experience that we did, but we also went to medieval times. And yeah. It was really fun, super delicious. And here we go. So this is the end of disc one. So yeah, this is kind of what I think of as the midway point. Yeah, we, we break through the character of the reviewers and now we're back into this world. I, I like, is this the one where I like I count you shoulders count off, to make yeah. sure we're both here? That was completely ad-libbed on the fly. That was yeah. fun. <gasps> there it and is. And of course, I'm doing the voice of the dead-eyed right. right there. And that's where John knocks through the door. So this was a $5 door that you and your yeah, dad from bought. Habitat from Humanity. Right, and it was the best five, probably the best $5 we put into this project. Yeah, uh, we, we it's a hollow core door. It's super cheap. So we just, you know, cut a square in, square in the back and scored it in an X. And I told John, I was like, we have one shot to do this. You have I, to wail I, I on would, this. You throw your fist through there as hard as possible. And poor guy had splinters yeah, coming through. I was and he was like, just like, I'm okay. And I I'm like, you're like a champion, dude. Praying off we, camera. Uh, we had one shot. You know, the adrenaline came back and we're actually like, let's do it. Let's yep. finish this. Yep. Uh, that is where morale started to go up. <laughs> only for it to tank again. Well, we're not there yet. Yeah, we'll, but, we'll so get there shortly. We ran out past the first barn and this implies we're headed to the second barn. But that's actually really, the first barn. That's actually the first barn. There's yeah, a the, lot of movie the magic other, here. The other barn is actually a lot more dilapidated and in like terrible state of repair. It's and perfect. It would have been perfect, but it was just too dark. It was too far away. It was like an eighth of a mile out and it could have been another episode of we lost the truck keys, except for we lost something else. So we decided to keep it towards the closer barn, especially because by this point, it was like 10 p.m. We were However, already tired. That was a nicer, newer barn. So this begins one of the, the first major parts Rewrite. of Rewrite. Writing some right, because we didn't we want to the, get blood in the yeah. nice barn. So we had to redo it on the fly, because originally we were going to get in the barn and we were going to do the fight We were going to throw some blood, but oh, I didn't feel right. Movie. There it is. Yeah. I didn't feel right throwing fake blood around in my friend's nice barn. Yeah. Like, that's where they keep, like, So instead we had to rewrite it to be a fight surprise. outside, but then right. some things got forgotten about. Like, I was supposed to do a scene where the deadite's approaching from a distance. Instead, this is <laughs> shot on an iPhone. Right, and it's funny because uh, John, our friend in the mask, he w I said, hey, zombie, do the Carlton. And he starts to do the Carlton, but the problem was we forgot to film the deadite, so Aaron actually took my jokey Carlton video and, and did And cropped it in really <laughs> tight. <laughs> right, <laughs> so... That was about two seconds before he started doing the yeah, Carlton. Yeah, yikes. Uh, so that that obviously was one of the first times we throw blood around. Yes. Helen, Helen got the stand off to the side and, you know, use a... We, we had a, a one-gallon garden sprayer that, you know, you pump up and down. Ten bucks and then, from Home Depot yeah. filled with fake blood. Yeah, I got to stand off camera and uh, spray it. And uh, talk about the big buck hunter controller. Well, first off, one of the first jokes we had to really write in here, obviously wanted to- Give me the, some sugar, baby. Yeah, wanted a sugar packet, even though that's- <laughs> It's so it's, it's stupid. Sweeter. It's low hanging fruit, but it's it was funny. Um, but yeah, so she wanted me to talk, uh, the, the big buck hunter arcade gun. Um, we could have like real props and whatnot, but instead I was like, well, you know, Ash, is, Ash, has got, Ash has got a chainsaw and he's got the boomstick. Yeah. And then so naturally, 
we find the video game equivalents, a Buck Hunter arcade pump shotgun, and, and the then Resident the Resident Evil chainsaw, chainsaw yeah, controller. which we'll see obviously later. Right. Um, so this is once again back into that meta universe concept where everything's in the TV, you're not ever leaving the world. So I had a, um, a uh, my laptop off to the side hooked into this, it's a Dell monitor, it's not actually a TV. And we just, you know, casted it off that, and I played the footage. And it's it's funny because that barn is still about a good, you know, three hundred ish feet plus away from the house. So it's still a little so that bit of generator a hike. we just started. We're actually running off of. Like yeah. we needed the generator to power the monitor, to charge my laptop, and to uh, just uh, give the the PlayStation power just for that five seconds. Right. You know. So then we casted it all. The I mean, Animaniacs love Pinky in the Brain. Had to throw a reference in That's there. That's actually us. If you know us personally, you know that we are Pinky in the Brain. But yeah, so it's just, it's funny to think about that, you know. It was originally a joke, but the generator was also a mandatory piece. Oh yeah, without it, without your dad's generator. So shout out to your dad. We This would not have been possible. Yeah, Big time. Uh, definitely not. Yeah, so we are firmly into disc two here. And um, it's funny because actually, like Aaron said, this was filmed on the Dell monitor in the barn. There, eventually, there's like a fly that comes up. It was attracted. <laughs> That's actually to the at the light. very end. I'll, yeah. I'll point that out whenever it, it comes on. <laughs> but screen. that was totally real. No, that was not scripted. Yeah. It just yeah. happened. Cause... Uh, I think it was like a moth or something. But yeah, because uh, it was drawn to the light. I'll specifically really point it out whenever it came out. Yeah. Um, but to, to talk about some of the other things that were going on at this time, um, my friend John. Uh, John Heights in the credits. Um, he uh, had to wear a deadite mask, obviously, because we are terrible at makeup. Right. Um, it's not in our wheelhouse of skills, and so <laughs> not even close. <laughs> Unless it's Animal Crossing makeup. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it was just it was claustrophobic. It was hot. He hated wearing it. Oh, I felt so bad for him having to wear that awful mask. Yeah. I think we gave him PTSD too. Yeah. Oof. It's funny to think about though, because whenever we went to film the later part at uh, at Mo Game Con, um, Red Sonia and her uh, her significant other. Um, Hillary, she is a cosplay specialty artist. Like, she does really, really awesome cosplays. And yeah. so whenever we talked about our Evil Dead project, we talked about, um, you know, we had a, a Deadite. And she's like, oh, what'd you do for the Deadite makeup? And I'm like, well, we just <laughs> put him in a mask. Because, now, you know, she's talking defense. about, like, contacts and all that stuff. And I'm right. like, I had to put a latex. She's, like, an awesome cosplayer. Oh, yeah. We're like, well... Not. No, but, I, give me the $50 mask and save yeah, me the time. Yeah, well, that's the thing is we actually bought a mask from the Ash vs. Evil Dead collection. So yeah, at on least we bought Studios. a decent one. And uh, I really, really wanted to keep that ugly old mask. It was covered in fake blood and sweat and grime. And Aaron actually convinced me to throw it away because it would have just been a pain in the butt to clean up. And it would have been messy. And honestly, we probably don't have a lot of use for a Deadite mask. But I don't know. I wanted to keep it. But we threw it out. I'm pretty sure John curses the existence of it. Oh, yeah. I don't want poor John comes over to the house and sees it and it just it all flashbacks to him. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. Oh no. It um <sighs> I, yeah, it took a little while to recover from this weekend, to be totally honest. I think everybody was a little bit traumatized by the end. Yeah. You know, whenever so whenever we uh, film the ending of this and we're like, oh my God, I, th I think that's the sun. It's finally over. We the were, reaction we was were, absolutely like, genuine. It was legit real because in like, our minds, we're like, let's go to bed. It was like 2 a.m. by that point, and we still had to haul all the equipment back, get cleaned up, review the footage, and make a game plan for the next morning because we had to leave the next morning. Yeah, we had to pack it up and we had to inventory all the gear and oh all the my stuff. Gosh. Do you remember I wrote out a whole page of gear in a notebook mm -hmm. of stuff we had to haul an hour away to this place where we were filming? Yeah, no, it was it was not worth the effort that we ended up putting into it. I mean, overall, I like the project, but you know, like there were some major rewrites and setbacks yeah. that we just had to accommodate for. And uh, I remember I asked you the other day, what was what's the grade of satisfaction you would give? Do you remember what you said? What did I say? You said 85 percent. And I think that's fair. That's like a B plus. Um, and I guess it's fitting for a B movie. But so yeah. I, it works. Were there some things we wanted to do differently? Absolutely. But at well, at we're its also core, a crew of two people. Right. At and, its and, core, Game and Browse is two people, and, and we had maybe some, some friends here or there. Like, exactly. So for two people, this doesn't suck. Yeah. Too no. much. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like the volunteer help was great. But, oh, and we know. appreciate the cast and crew all. Six of you, yeah, approximately. Yeah, and anybody who stepped in, you know who you are. We and love thank you. you for your yeah. time. But 85 isn't project. too bad, you know. Yeah. 
One of the few shots we actually no shot in the barn. Right, we totally forgot about B-roll in the barn, but uh, it was ah, just, whatever. Well, once again, we were spent. It was just so much effort by this point. Yeah. You know, it would have been nice if we could have spaced it out, but uh, I'm not paid to do it. Like I've said, so. at our core, we're a gameplay channel. People are watching this. Well, yeah, for that the was Evil actually Dead that was one of the game. big struggles of you know producing this is you know wanting to keep the balance of review versus skit. Right. I, I wanted it to be kind of like a mini movie, but I also didn't want to lose the core of it being a review. Exactly. Which is why this video is like 30 minutes long. It's a really All right, delicate here we go. balance. All right, now we're actually going to get into the fight. Um, John had to work. John's lift here yeah, was amazing. He, he was working on his Undertaker exorcist skills there whenever he had to kind of lean up with no help. Um, <laughs> this, <laughs> that sound that comes out of me I'm there pretty is sure so I pulled funny. it from GoldenEye uh, 64. I love it. And there's, and there's the appearance of the controller, yes, obviously foreshadowing where we're going with this. Rolling in the dirt. I had to find some way to save Helen, so my first option was to take a PS1 controller and garrot the the deadite. Perfect. Yeah, which poor John. I had to. I think you know, like in the actual original cut, you could hear John like. Ugh. Okay, this this was. We the, had one shot to get that right. We had one shot for this. I prayed before this shot because I knew I had one shot and to lean up. And it's a shower up, of blood. Get Helen just frame. spit out blood. There was so right. much. Right, and I remember I I was like I had so much blood in my mouth. I had to spit it out. And you ended up really liking that take. It made you said it made you laugh that I leaned over and spat out the blood. <laughs> But you can see she's coated, so we only have one oh, shot to get that right. And you can't hardly see my eyes there, but I had dirt in my eyes, yeah. so my eyes were burning and puffy, and there was makeup in my eyes. Also, I switched to a pair of broken glasses, if you right. didn't notice that when small, subtle crunched. little detail. I, I have a duplicate pair of glasses, and I went and hit them with a hammer because they were right. they were not the right settings And anymore. another thing that got thrown away. Yeah. I feel like we need a counter in the corner of th times we said things got thrown away afterwards. What can is we get, that, can like we get four? A, can we get a count on that? Well, can we get like the, the running total of how much the things we threw away cost. Oh God, I don't even want to know. But like, that was pain there. That was pain in that scene. We were itchy and hot and there was yeah. dirt. It's, you it's were especially covered in dirt because we had to do oh the drag shot with John quite a few times. What did the one time he accidentally dragged you he like- He dragged me. He dragged you like, like two to three feet. Right, my stomach was exposed and yeah, like, was there was like cut on rocks. twigs and you were like, stop, stop, stop dragging her. I was like, <laughs> like I was afraid you were gonna get cut on a rock or something. You went into full husband mode. Like <laughs> you saw me like, yeah. ah, and Oh gosh, I just I feel, I feel like oh we there need was to... the bug. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed it. Oh yeah, <laughs> after all that, but I feel like we need to pay for John's therapy. We put him through a lot, but oh, we well, put funny. ourselves through a lot too. Now to break from our quick little behind the scenes, I just want to say I'm going to reiterate what I said here shortly coming up. This game was super fun. I felt like whenever we did this uh, review, I wanted to give the game some justice. Because yeah. it gets sandbagged on the internet a lot. And a lot of people, you know, it's a Resident Evil clone. It's not as good. It's I not. thought it was great. Some people like the later games more because they're hack and slash. But I like this because, you know, you kind of feel the vulnerability that Ash does. Yeah. You know, it's 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 horror. It's survival. It was great. I really, really enjoyed this game. It was fun. Uh, the production... Well, you yeah. Know. Whenever we played it in the basement, it was a lot. Oh yeah, it, it was a lot easier. Cuddled to think up about. in our pajamas uh, back when it was cold outside. That was nice. But yeah. then sweating our butts off producing it. Mm. Now here's the scene coming up where we feel the total relief of it being daytime. Uh, originally, <laughs> we were going to do a time lapse of the sun coming up, but we were so burnt we were out. So spent. I, I I told John I was like, just pull the gel away from the light and call it a day. So that joy there, totally yeah. real. But it's also Not still nighttime. Uh, yeah, it's like so, 2 a.m. So by I just this had point. you know a daytime light, but we pulled a blue gel away. But that ended the and weekend. And now we're at Mo Game Con. There, yeah, there goes our friend Bob. And this was actually by. filmed on site at Mo Game Con 2021 last month. All right, so there's Charlie or Chuck, a great friend and sponsor of the channel, helps run Mo Game Con, and also Adam Corlick making a wonderful Star Wars joke. Yes, thank that you for that. That was ad lib. Oh, it was so funny. And Red Sonia, she's a Twitch streamer, and her partner, Hillary, which we just mentioned, she was the one that uh, asked Amazing us about the, the makeup. And, and then, of course, here's us. us. We had to put on our nasty, bloody barn yeah, clothes the, the and paint ourselves fake with blood, the which nasty we used stuff. A, a paintbrush. In the and, college bathroom. And the yeah. security guards who were working night shift that night, they eyeballed us so hard and were like, we're filming a <laughs> it's video. It's okay, don't worry about it. I, I think we were too goofy looking to pose a threat. Yeah. But uh, while these credits are rolling, shout out to the friends Literally and family that appeared. Literally everybody that appeared in without... From a small impre oh impact gosh. cameo to, you know, uh, anything. Boom operators, yeah. like everybody. Without this, without you, this would not have been possible. So super duper thank yous to you guys. Here's our special thanks, of course. Uh, we just... We I hope that you enjoy this as well if you've watched it. 
and uh, you know, just continue to support us through all of this. Yeah. Uh, we're very, very appreciative of all the new subscribers to the channel this year and all the new people that have commented. Uh, we appreciate you guys and we hope that you stick around with us uh, in videos to come. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's get out of here. All right. 